Yes, thank you. County Contract Accommodation Board is in session for December 1st, 2021. Madam Secretary, we read the rules. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Please silence all cell phones. If you wish to speak, please let the board secretary know in advance. Otherwise, raise your hand for the board chair to recognize your request. When the chairman calls you to speak, come to the podium. We're not going to adjust the microphone, please, and state your name and address for the record. If you are requested to keep your remarks brief and factual, both parties of an issue will be granted uniform maximum time to speak. It usually runs around three to five minutes. This hearing is considered quasi-judicial, conduct is formal, and profane or derogatory comments will not be tolerated. Madam Secretary, we have a quorum. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, with five members present, we do. All right, do you have proof of publication of the notification of this meeting? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, it was published in the Sun Press on November 25th, 2021. Very good. We approved item four, approval in the minutes. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, you'll notice you have two sets of minutes um, from October 6th and November 3rd. I entertain a motion to approve the minutes from October the 6th. Motion approved. Second. Motion made and seconded into discussion, changes or additions. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the minutes for October the 6th are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes from November the 3rd. Motion made. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the minutes of November the 3rd are approved. Item number five, public forum. At this time, we have the opportunity for the public to come before the board on any subject that's not on the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I didn't receive up? any speaker Nobody forms. Nobody signed up. Then we'll move forward to item number six, secretary status report. No updates at this time, sir. None? None. We move then to item seven, contractor applications. Contractor applications. The first application is Mr. Marvin Griffin. Mr. Griffin, state your first and last name and address for, your rec for the record, please. Marvin Griffin, 8922 Bluebell Street. Mr. Griffin, application for examination, uh, Master Plumber with gas for your approval, sir. Glad to have you here. Yes, sir. Mr. Griffin, uh, entertain a motion to approve the application. Motion approved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, application for examination, Master Plumber with gas but Mr. Griffin is approved. Thank you, sir. Don't come back to see us. Yes, sir. 
unless you want to give us a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Item number two. The second item on the list is Mr. Jacob Cunningham. Mr. Cunningham, state your first and last name and address for the record, please. Jacob Cunningham, 117 Headwater Road, Fairhope, Alabama. Mr. Cunningham is coming for a reinstatement of license. He has um, what is the underground license. He took a test back uh, three years ago and just failed to renew the county license for over three years. He had everything else. He kept update with the state as far as his So his state education. license is, is up to date? His state license is up to date. Is there a recommendation? It's staff's recommend. We don't give recommendations on reinstatement. You don't? Over three years. They have to meet certain criteria for the board to approve the reinstatement. Okay. Entertain a motion to approve. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? He does, he does meet the current requirement to have his license reinstated. Uh, Mr. Cunningham, if you'll just go ahead and give a brief explanation sure. on what happened. Um, I think I took the test even longer ago than that, and we kept up our competency here uh, regularly. A lady who was handling that in my office left and unfortunately did not leave a checklist that included a renewal of this, and uh, there are no notices sent out to us. So uh, it simply slipped through the cracks for, for this long, and we are converting to a certified contractor license, and they have to verify that we're in good standing with each county that we're registered in, and that's how this came up. We realized in that process that... Okay. What other counties are they registered in? Registered Santa Rosa. Mr. Jacob okay. also... Any further discussion? Mr. Jacob also has to check for the remaining um, amount that he does okay. owe. So he, uh, all, all the fees for the county? Yes, sir. The update. Thank you much, yes, very much. You're welcome. All those. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the reinstatement of license for Mr. Cunningham is approved. Thank you very Thank much. You. And hope we don't see you again. I don't plan to be here. Again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Item number three. Item number three, Mr. Mark Berry. State your first and last name and address for the record, Mr. Berry. My name is Mark Berry at 149 Yucatan Drive, Pensacola. Mr. Berry is here for reinstatement of his registered um, residential license. He was a little over 100 days delinquent. He did pay the $150 fee to come in front of the board, so I think he has like 375 left remaining. He wanted to come in front of the board and see if we can get those fees waived. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. We don't have that authority. No, no Mr. Chairman. Uh, the fees are, it's my understanding, the fees are set by resolution, um, and this board does not have the authority to amend or waive those amounts. You understand that, Mr. No, Beard? I didn't. I, I didn't understand what you just said. Uh, the they, they can't. This board does not have the authority to waive the amounts or to amend the amounts. Um, those, those amounts have already been set by resolution of another board. So it, it's got to be done by a separate resolution. No, no, no. Those those amounts are already set, and uh, amending them or waiving any amount is beyond the authority of this board. This board simply approves or denies. It's set in law. We can't change the law. Okay. That's the reason I came today. Okay, you ready to, do you want to move forward? Well, get, there's nothing, well, I gave a reason for it last month's meeting, and I thought it was going to be, it was considered at that time, but I thought it was, the answer came from you as the board, but I mean, he's, he's making it very clear that it's a separate, I thought you did have the authority. No, we do not. To, to determine about those fees this board has the authority to either approve your reinstatement or deny your reinstatement uh, the fees are set we can prove the reinstatement subject to your payment of the fees do you want to continue with that 
Oh, I, I can just talk about that with, uh, with her, but it's... No, no, we have to approve the reinstatement. So, Mr. Chairman, just as an FYI, his reinstatement is not in excess of three years. Those reinstatements come to this board. Um, you have designated the board secretary the ability to approve okay. um, reinstatements that are less than three years. Less than three, okay. So you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Thank you for being here. Sorry Thank we couldn't you. help you. Is there any action that we have to take on this? Huh? Is there any motion or any action we have to take on this? We'll have to withdraw the motion. No. There was no motion made. There was no motion. Okay. Move to item eight, probable cause. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item eight is a probable cause hearing for Cyrus Shams doing business as Seashell Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RC29027671. Contractor Competency Board complaint numbers 210541COM. It's in regard to Catherine Moody, homeowner complainant at 6761 Bellevue Pines Road, Pensacola, Florida. Mr. Shams and Ms. Moody are both present today. Um, if you two could please rise and be sworn in. And uh, our investigator as well, Melissa Reber. I swear. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to um, the investigator, Ms. Melissa Reber, to give a recap of, of this investigation. Um, my name is Melissa Reber, investigator for Escambia County Building Services uh, Licensing Division. On April 30th, 2021, I received a complaint from Catherine Moody regarding leaking and other issues she was having with her roof installed by Cyrus Shams doing business as Seashell Construction Group, LLC. Ms. Moody provided a copy of a signed estimate dated December 2nd, 2020. Ms. Moody advised that the roof was completed on March 30, 2021, and within a few weeks after it rained, she discovered a leak over her fireplace and discovered various holes and cracks on the wood around the roof. Ms. Moody also discovered a hole in the wall uh, near a spare bedroom. Ms. Moody stated someone working on the roof climbed down on her back deck railing and broke it. Ms. Moody submitted text communication between she and Cyrus Shams where she was telling him about the problem with her roof. As of that date, April 30th, 2021, Ms. Moody had paid Seashell Construction $7,325.50. I spoke with Ms. Moody and she was wanting the roof inspected. I explained that the contractor would need to call for the inspection as he was the permit owner. On May 3rd, 2021, I spoke with Cyrus Shams and asked him when he would be calling for the final inspection on the subject property. Mr. Shams advised he would not until he received payment, which was in the amount of $4,974.50. Mr. Shams advised that he was preparing to place a lien on Ms. Moody's home for non-payment. When I advised Mr. Shams about the complaint, uh, and the issues she was having with her roof, he stated that he has not been allowed onto her property, therefore he's not aware of any issues that he has, that he has been able to see. On May 4th, 2021, Ms. Moody came into the office and brought a copy of a lien she found taped to her garage door. Ms. Moody expressed concern on charges th that were added for extra plywood. Ms. Moody pointed out that the amount of his bill was different than the estimate which she signed on 11-6-2020 for $9,800, the difference being $2,474.50. Uh, Mr. Shams had provided an uh, estimate on 3-10-19 for $8,750. Then the estimate provided on 11-6-2020 was signed by Ms. Moody for $9,800. And then on 1-13-21, he gave her another estimate for $12,300.
um, Ms. Moody had expressed that she did not feel like that cost, that she received that additional plywood, that much additional plywood. On May 14th, 2021, Ms. Moody called and advised that Mr. Shams met her on site with her neighbor. He's still refusing to do anything until he receives the final payment of $4,974.50. June 9th, 2021, key staff reviewed the case for potential movement to probable cause, however, elected to monitor due to the roof permit being active. September 23rd, 2021, re-roof permit for the project was expired without Mr. Sham scheduling a final inspection. On October 5th, 2021, key staff reviewed the case again and determined the case needed to move forward due to the ex expired permit. It was discussed that I reach out to both parties and obtain any additional photos um, as there's no affidavit with photos in the record. On October 6, 2021, I spoke to Ms. Moody and asked if she had any additional photos, specifically color photos that may give a better indication of her concerns and she did follow up with a set of photos. On October 25th, 2021, I spoke to Mr. Shams making the same request and was provided a set of code colored photos, which appear to be in progress photos. On 11-30-21, I checked the building <coughs> services permit system and determined that there is no record of Mr. Shams reinstating the re-roof permit, therefore no final inspection has been conducted. Both parties are present. Ms. Moody, yes, sir. would you come before us, please? Okay. Ms. Moody, if you'll state your name and address for the record. My name is Catherine Moody. I live at 6761 Bellevue Pines Road, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. And my telephone number? Yeah, yes, but we'd like to hear what your issue is besides the, the he. Okay, my issue is. If you'll come forward a little bit closer to the microphone. Okay. My issue was, we had a verbal agreement that he would start on my roof in the December. And I started getting leaks everywhere. And so I called him. And he told me after I had already paid him $7,000, um, I got I papers over there, I'm sorry, and gave him some money. Then he said that was just a verbal agreement. He said, I don't have to start until I get ready to start. It was over the phone. I was working and stuff. So, um, we got into an argument over the phone, so he decided, I don't want to do your roof. I said, well, give me my money back. He said, I have to get my fees first. I said, but you haven't did anything. So this, when he came and got, did the permit, which was in Jan January of, two, January of 20, one, 21. Wait, yes, 21. And then I called you guys. No, I called you guys, and then he went and got the permit. Uh, the man I talked to talked to him. He retired, but well, he told me that she. He told him, the guy that worked here. I forgot his name. I have it in my phone. That um, she was at my house. I said no. It wasn't there when I left because I leave home at six something in the morning and it wasn't there. So I had my son go out there and take a picture and see it wasn't no shingles there. And then uh, he, I called him back and told him there's no shingles at my house. So he went and called and had the shingles delivered the next day. It's it just going back and forth. He was rude to me, and I, I'm, I defend myself to the utmost. I don't let nobody just talk to me in any kind of way. So that's why I was rude back to him. But the thing is, I had a contract for 9000 something. I understand it's going to be extra wood and stuff, but not that much money over. Because I could have went with another company if he would have gave me his, what was on the paper that I could he could have been paid and been gone, but not not as much as he said. Not no twelve thousand. Not no twelve thousand something dollars. It was just nine thousand. Our agreement was nine nine thousand eight hundred something dollars. And, and plus he leave it holes in my wall and he told me he did me a favor for doing my roof and he just caulk it up as a loss. I was like, 
who do that? It's cracks out there, and he told me, who I about get painted, have them caulk it. But if you caulk the back, why not caulk the front? You don't do half. And he said, I don't paint and I don't do that. But on his contract, it does say, I do it all. And he do not. He did not. Because he was angry with me. And I have no problem with it. You know, start calling me, calling me, then I blocked him. His girlfriend, wife, or whoever she is, start calling me. I'm working. I blocked her. She called me from a different number. I'm being harassed. Now he have a lawyer calling me, Ms. harassing Ms. me. I have a question for you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but um, is it kill? Is the, is the house still currently leaking? The is there still a current? Uh, is there a leak still at the house? He came and put some caulking. I'm sorry, he put caulking around the part that was leaking. Leaking, but the hose and stuff. That's when you say I caulking, do you mean like roof roofing material or? I, I, I guess so. He got up on top of the house. I didn't. I couldn't see. I'll ask you in a minute. But he did go up there and he put some caulking. I had my neighbor with him, me, and he didn't like the fact that I had someone there. So is with it currently me. leaking? When it rains, is it currently leaking? It's not, no. Okay. It's not. But uh, I still have a hole in my wall. I still have a hole on the outside. It's, it's this big, but anything crawled through. And I, I didn't expect all of this be done like this. I told him it was debris all over my attic. He said nobody don't live up there. I store stuff up there. It was my attic. I picked up paper and nails and stuff, but I expected to pick up some things. Miss Moody, but, um, where's the hole? You said there's a hole. In my guest bedroom. I have a picture. Do you have any pictures of that? There are pictures in there. <laughs> Jennifer, can you show the pictures of the holes? And also, Ms. Moody, when were these holes? When did you notice these holes? I noticed when I, uh, the man was coming to look at my air condition. Um, he said, what's this? What's this? And, and, then, and that's when I noticed about a week later. I didn't, because I don't go in my guest bedroom. There's a hole. <laughs> it was a two by four. All the way through, and I did show him the reason I decided not to let him come to my house from the beginning because he was being rude to me, and I didn't want to talk to him. And I let Miss Melissa know, so she told me I had to give him a chance to come. So I called him, and then I had I arranged with someone to be there with me when he came. So that's when he came over. But he said again, I did you a favor doing your roof. I guess everybody that do people roof does people favors, but doing their roof. But he the one who pursues is this me. On the, he but this me. on the wall. This hole on the wall. Hmm? This hole that we're looking at here is that on the wall? Yes, that's above <laughs> the picture. Yes, I have it in color if you need it. How how did we get a hole? From the outside, they was working on the uh, porch, front porch. I can show you that too. <laughs> They're working from the front porch, and they must. have all the way through. I don't know. I, I can Did you say you have a contract? No, I had somebody was looking at my application. I don't. I been. I did get someone to come and look at it, and it was Monday, but they have. They took them two months to get to my house to give me a estimate. He hadn't sent me the estimate through the mail email yet. But yes, I did get someone. He would work for Home Depot. Yeah, but I'd say you don't have a contract with Mr. With who? With, with Mr. Mr. Shams. No, I don't. I did have one. Just an estimate. I, just an estimate. I signed a contract. I did sign one. It was for nine thousand. I have. He, you signed a contract for nine thousand dollars. And eight hundred dollars. Okay. Here we are so, then. I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. You're aware that Mr. Shams is a registered state has a uh, state registered license. Mm -hmm. He is registered. He's not uh, state certified. What? He's not state certified. He's not state certified? He's, his roofing license is local. Okay. He, he has a, a GC license that is state. Okay. But, not but for the roof, the roof But this local. is done under his roofing license. So we have absolute authority over That's right. Thank you very much. Any other thing you want to say, Ms. Moody? I'm, I'm ready for this to be over with. Okay. I'm so tired. It's, 
it done got me to the point. It's um, stressed me to the point. <laughs> I can't hardly do my job. Okay. Well, thank you. We'll ask you back up if we have other questions. Thank you. Mr. Yamas? Name and address? Cyrus Shams, uh, P.O. Box 3640, Pensacola, Florida, 32516. Okay. What's your story? So, since day one, she's been calling me, asking me to do the roof. And that's kind of how she's cried on the phone to me several times because I was hesitant to take the job initially because we looked at the roof in 2019 and the roof was in extremely neglected condition so i was even scared getting on the roof to measure it which i did measure it myself and it was so far deteriorated that i was just scared being up there so that kind of gives you idea of how much neglect was you know occurring with this roof it had needed to be done probably five to ten years ago and so as far as those repairs that you're seeing, like a hole in the wall or something, it's because we had to replace siding and headers to just be able to finish the roof, to put flashing, to have it completed. We couldn't complete the roof without doing those items. And those are the additional items that were mysteries that didn't come up until we actually got out there and tore the roof off. Um, there was siding around the chimney that needed to be replaced because once we took it off, it was deteriorated. And she is well aware of those items because we did discuss that well before we even started the job. Um, she asked me to give her another estimate after our roof estimate with all these additional items that she thought she asked me to provide that I thought will come up when we do the roof. And as I said, with the deterioration, you know, wood siding around the chimney to replace that because the flashing was bad. We replaced the flashing, replaced the wood around it, and we caulked the chimney specifically. That's the only place we caulked just to prevent water from coming in. So she's asking about caulking. The only place we did it was to prevent water from coming in around the chimney. And in addition to that, she complained about a leak. I came out there with her neighbor's, you know, presence um, and looked at the issues that she had, the leak was actually inside the fireplace. So it was coming from the chimney flue, not the chimney cap, not the roof, nothing to do with the roof, nothing to do with what we replaced. The only thing that we did do up there as an additional favor and to help her is she had a shower curtain covering the chimney cap. So there's no use of that chimney at that point. The cap had a shower curtain, you know, liner sitting on top of it, strapped with a bungee cord or some rope. Um, what we did is we took that off. I had an extra storm collar for the chimney. I added that on there. I t caulked it, and that's the caulking that she's describing as leaked. I guess it settled a little bit, and I came back and resealed that one area that settled. Completely got rid of the leak, but that was not part of our contract, and we did that anyway just to help out because I saw it when I was up there when we were tearing the roof off, and I said, let's fix this while we're here to prevent any issues in the future. Um, because I know she was very sensitive about that, you know, through the whole thing. Um, another thing that I'll bring up, too, is when she said, because we had a lot of delays during the hurricane with materials. I did order materials. She's saying I brought it the next day. But what really happened is I sent my order in to my sales guy. He missed that specific order only which is something out of my control. When I confronted him about it, he apologized profusely to me um, and had it out there the next day once I figured it out because I had assumed that the material had already been delivered to her house. Um, but, you know, um, lost my train of thought. How much was your original payment for? I see it in the contract. It states 50% due up front. Correct. 50% is due up front, but she ended up, she didn't have, she gave me just what, that's what she gave me. I asked her for 50, but that's what she gave me. She gave me 7,000 some change. I don't know. Yes. So, um, but the, it is more than 50%. Yes. And I told her that, but she wanted to give it to me. That's the only check that she had written. So 
I mean, I'm not going to say no to the deposit, you know. Um, especially, it seemed like she doesn't have checks. Like, she went to the bank specifically for that to make that amount possible. So, um, that's where I'm at. And then, so, once I realized we'd finished the roof, there weren't any leaks that I knew of at that time. I requested payment, you know, final invoice. Um, we initially had given her an invoice of, I mean, an estimate of 12000 for all those repairs, soffit repairs. Uh, I think we included 15 sheets of plywood in that number, um, and that's where it got up to the, let me see the number, the 12,000 number that... Um, that was in January. <laughs> that was in January, correct, yeah. And so we had initially, our initial um, contract was 9,800. Then she asked me to write up another estimate for her insurance, showing all the additional stuff that I anticipated to be replaced, which was siding, soffit. On your screen right now is yeah. the initial estimate that she received, 9800 um, that she signed. And then the one that he's referencing that came back later is now up on your screen at the 12003 and, and that, that was for the additional, um, that was for the additional plywood, basically. Plywood another, that I anticipated, because like I said, it was so far gone. Wasn't there one before that? Just 8,000 something. That's right. from 2019. So there were huge yep. tra changes in labor costs and material costs from 2019. Okay, well that wasn't, that one, that one there wasn't signed. Correct. I see the that one, one that was signed. We, in 2019, we gave her an estimate. She didn't call us till after the hurricane and requesting for us to do it. I redid our estimate because it had expired at that point from the 2019. Um, so I gave her a new estimate and prices have increased crazy pricing, you know, with materials. Wood gone up. It had gone up a lot, yeah. And I mean, not just, it's labor and materials have gone up. It's been outrageous, but um, so that's what I did. And then she said, well, is that everything? Is that everything? I said, well, there might be plywood. Obviously, in our fine print, it says additional plywood it has a, a price, a value to it, which on this one at that time, let's see, we were at $80 a sheet. $80 a sheet. So I calculated based on 15 sheets, I believe. Yeah, 15 sheets, um, replacing the rot at the chimney and fascia at the entrance of the house. However, we ended up using, let's see what we used, I think eight sheets, I wanna say. We ended up using, yeah, eight sheets, but then we had other work. We did the chimney repair, we did the siding repair in the front, which is the chimney and the siding, the same like T11 siding. Um, and then there were all, also additional soffit repairs that were necessary. We did those where it was literally just completely rotten. Um, but then we discovered when we opened up the front porch area where it meets, there's a little wall where there's an elevation or slope change between the porch and the like main roof. Um, there's a little siding on the side and that siding was rotten and we had re planned to replace that siding and put new flashing in there. But once we opened it, we realized there wasn't a kick out for the water to go away from the siding. So it looked like it had been neglected and the water had completely rotted that 12 by, 2 by 12 header there. It was a double header. The outside piece was bad. We replaced that outside. The inside was good. But just getting that in there, I believe my guys possibly made that hole inside just trying to get the header in there because it was a very, very tight space and a lot of finagling to get that piece in there. And I believe that's where that comes from, which I've told her multiple times, and this was the past, I do not, I am not going to be going back to that house and repairing anything at this point. And I've offered her credits, my attorney has talked to her, I am in loss, about to go into a lawsuit with her and to sue, to sue her for this and, you know, because it's been just nightmare. It doesn't need to be this way. I mean, from day one I've offered to fix and take care of everything once I got paid, but it just never. I've got a question yes, for sir. both of you. Does anybody, you will not allow him on your property? Is that correct? Well, I'm saying right now. If he said he can go out there and fix it right now, would you let him go out there and fix it? Yeah, because he just said he wasn't going to do it. So I'm going to take it as a loan. 
I thought you just said a minute. Never did. said taken as a loss. <laughs> I thought she just said a minute ago she wasn't gonna. Go no. well, anybody go out there? No, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. She's blocked me. She's blocked anyone I try to call her. Every time I try to call her, text her, she never responds. I mean, months sometimes between me, I'll text her, call her. A month later, no response. I call her, text her. I'll call you back. Never calls me. Then she blocks me. When, when's the last time you were out there? Um, right after the lien was placed. So I think like maybe end of May, early June. And that's where I caught the uh, chimney of uh, storm collar. And at that point, at that point, which was almost six months ago, or over six months ago, um, I, I said, hey, you know, once you pay me, you bring the check, I'll fix everything, give me the check, and I'm out of here. You know, we'll take care of everything. But I've been trying to contact, call her, everything. For six months, I've, I got fed up with it. So now I've called an attorney, and now attorney fees are racking up to get this money from her, and she's playing games with the attorney also going back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, I mean, I, I almost have no choice but to go to lawsuit at this point. I've got a question for the county attorney. Uh, I see that this is not even signed. This last estimate was not signed. Does that have any kind of... I mean, I, I don't particularly want to answer that question right now, uh, okay. given that there is potential litigation between the two parties. Um, I will note that it's not always necessary to have a signed contract you could have a verbal agreement um, and a contract could be implied in fact if there wasn't a signed one um, typically for this amount uh, that you would have a signed agreement um, but because the original estimate was signed and this estimate was there some type of verbal agreement between you all that the, she, the changes could be made she asked me to give it to her for her insurance she was well aware that there are possibility of more charges and it is in our fine print also that plywood has a cost there is one sheet included but there is additional charge for other plywood it has no mention of siding it has no mention of soffit work of fascia work you know of header work it has no mention of that in our estimate those are additional charges that she is well aware of and was aware of since day one because we discussed it because i showed her hey this is there's rot here, there's rot there, it is neglected, it's, you know, it needs right. a lot of work. Yeah, I won't, I won't delve any more into that, but. The, the point is, it's, it's not always necessary to have a, a signed agreement. That was my question. Uh, yes. But, I mean, the other thing is, I mean, as far as closing the permit, every single permit I've pulled has been closed out. Even ones that were delayed, I've reinstated. It's hundreds of permits for roofs, hundreds and hundreds. And, I mean, literally, this is on my desk, hold for payment. I have a signed roof affidavit. Everything's ready to go to send in and reinstate the permit. Uh, I will say, from based on the uh, information you have at the bottom of this estimate of January the 27th, yes. you identified the additional cost per sheet of plywood. Yes. Half, a uh, half-inch plywood was 80 bucks. Three-quarter inch plywood was 90. Correct. If it if you use 15 sheets of three-quarter inch plywood, that's $1,350 right Correct. off the top. That's not counting labor. Correct. So. That just shows, that's the additional charge there from the original. What estimate. would it take for you to stop, for you to yeah. close this thing out? If I got my final payment, and I've offered her a credit of $200 through my attorney, for the drywall repair, I would be more than happy to take that, have that payment, my final payment minus $200. But at this point, I have attorney fees of $800 almost already. So, you know. What's your final payment due? Uh, $4,974, I believe. Yes, in 50 cents. So, I mean, I would take it right now if she were to give me a final payment of 49.74.50 less 200 less 200 I would take that right now and just to just to be completed with this because I don't have any intention to take it any further except for my final payment you know I mean that's my real that's the only and I would have no problem reinstating the permit and getting it closed out and I have inspected that roof 
at, at that time that I did the chimney repair, it is in perfect condition. It is a great seal on the roof. It is, there's nothing wrong with that roof. And there are no leaks? There are no leaks. I brought up on your screen um, the invoice, just so you'll, you can see it itemized with the additional eight sheets and everything. And as you can see, number seven is the added scope that we yeah. you know, have. That was in addition to the original contract. I have a question. What date did you start the re-roof? Um, I believe it was in March. I believe March. I don't remember. Um, the reason I'm asking is it's relative to the dates on these uh, estimates. So, yes, yeah, so I believe, I mean, so the invoice is March 31st. So that would have been maybe a week after we completed at the most. So I would say probably middle March is when we finish the roof. I'll just add, if this helps, the permit was issued on March 23rd, 2021. When did she make the deposit? That's a good question. Well, I applied for a permit December 31st. So the application was in while it wasn't issued because of payment, but it was applied for on December 31st. Mr. Irwin, he did apply in December, and I had a discussion with Cyrus back. Um, it was, I think, in January. I, I actually brought him in and told him, hey, look, you have all these permits. We need to get them paid for, issued, et cetera. And he did immediately take care of those. So he put in his application in December, but the issuance date was after payment. So he did apply for the permit within the required time. So you can apply but not pay. And well, I'll, when I'm a single operator, operator of my business, and we had hundreds and hundreds of permits out there, but yeah, I mean everything is paid, everything is cleared right now, so yeah, and and everything is paid, like I said. I don't. Uh, what, what attorney can you give me a legal status on that? Is he good just because he applied? I thought you had to actually pull the permit. Mr. Mr. Waters, at this time, I, I do not know the answer to that off the top of my head, but I'm happy to, if you were to pass this case, I'm happy to research that and provide you an answer yes, before the please next let meeting. No, because I see this on a lot of cases, even though nobody brings it up. Mr. Chairman, the question was asked when she made the uh, down payment of $7,325.50. Uh, she had a cashier's check on 12 yeah. 320 that's uh, December the 3rd she paid okay, 70 7325 dollars and the final estimates for 12,000 something I don't remember what it was right off the top yeah. of my head uh, 12,000 300 I believe 300 12,300 yeah. well if you add 4974 dollars for what is due <coughs> it adds up to that and that $4,974 is for the additional materials and labor. Correct. So from my look, it's due. The issue of the permitting is to get it inspected. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. At this time, we have an expired permit. Okay. Now, there are options available to all contractors in regards to reinstatement. Uh, Mr. Shams would have to fill out a reinstatement form, get it approved by the building official, pay the fee for reinstatement, and then he could call for his final inspection. He would need to provide a roofing affidavit and notice a commencement, you know, so we could have those with the permit um, before he could get his final inspection. Well, it appears what we have is uh, he doesn't want to do anything until he gets the extra payment. Right. He's not going to file for a, a reinstatement of the permit without it. 
so it doesn't get inspected. Uh, so this just keeps going on forever? What's that? So would this would just keep going on forever? It could keep going on forever, so but the uh, would be for I think from what well, I, we know right now, I would suggest that we take it to uh, disciplinary based unless they want to come to some other agreement. I, that's my only leverage at this point for payment. I mean, if she I, wants I understand everything that. and not get paid, and then I got to deal with it. I them. understand that. We understand that. But it's you not, can't go on forever. Leverage. It's not your only leverage. You also file a lien, right? Correct. But I have to pay okay. for attorney. I have to follow up with it. I have to go. It's the long process, yeah, of course, of, you know. Part of um, Irwin knows when it should that, be That's simple. part of being a business owner, right, Irwin? Did you have something? I, Mr. Chairman, I, I would just point out if this board uh, – intends to proceed to the next stage uh, we would just need something on the record uh, stating which violation the, uh, the right. board is finding is supported by probable cause um, and preferably with examples um, so if, if it's misconduct for example you know, the, the board is finding uh, probable cause to support the violation of misconduct because of X Y and Z or if it's some other violation of county code Mr. Chairman, I believe Ms. Moody wanted to speak again when time permits. Okay. Would you stand up, please? Yes, I would love for this to be over with, but I feel like he's overcharging me saying this because he's cheating me and he's trying to get me to do something they stop making the house. they stop making the shingles i but can't then he bought the shingles do anything. The house, then he switched them out and put a different shingle on it i wasn't there i didn't care due to the fact that i wanted to stop leaking in my house but the extra work and stuff i think he did it i, I know it's extra work but not that much extra work on my house was it would be twelve thousand eight hundred dollars it well, that was the last estimate. That was your last estimate. It was twelve thousand three hundred dollars. But I did not agree to it. No, he made he made all the decisions. You made. I all did the not decisions. make all the decisions. But okay. if the rot, if there is rotten wood, I need to replace it. I'm not going to install a roof on rotten wood. You, you told them. It I took us an entire you day more okay. than we needed to. You came to my door. Right now we got a he said, she said. But the point is, you're at a point that an estimate was set up for $12,300. According to my calculations, you still owe $4,975 to satisfy that estimate. But that wasn't an agreement, though. That is the agreement. You signed well, it. Uh, I signed Correct. That, that, est eight that eight estimate eight. versus the other estimate had all that additional plywood, and I came up with a cost of just the plywood alone was thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. Just the plywood. I spoke to your insurance company probably thirty times. And we ended up in the same result that we are today. I tried my best. I tried every effort possible. I've spent hours and hours to help her with her insurance to get her money. And it's been what you still, I'm still at the same place that I've been at since day one. You know, since it's issuing that invoice and sending that invoice to her. Okay, I'm can still you give us a list of about probable? I have a question for Mr. Champ. Do yes. You Always collect final payment before you get final inspection. Only if I feel I'm not going to get paid. So that is not true on all of them. But usually, I'd say nine out of ten times, I get final payment the day or the week after we're completed, and then I call for final inspection. If I feel after a week or two that I'm not going to get paid, I don't touch the permit till I get paid. So you pull permits and go do work and never get an inspection on your work. That's a I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. I have a zero abandoned permits out there except well, for this one. Well, you have one. Okay, 
but you understand the reasoning for it. Would you do the same? Uh, I always complete my jobs. Okay. I do the right thing. I do the and right I, thing I as well. That, I go to court and, and deal with that. On that okay. Point. Well, we're in the process of that. So. Yeah, but you haven't gotten an inspection. So I should close the permit for her to benefit when she's not even taking my phone call? <laughs> I mean. But, but you're missing the point what you got to do back over here. And I had all that intention, and we had a long time to finish okay. that permit. But she, I mean, I've been fighting. She won't even take my phone call. How can I finalize a permit? I don't even know if there's going to be an issue with the inspector because she won't let the inspector maybe on the property. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Mr. Chairman, I'll add whether it's relevant or not. The question was asked about Ms. Moody allowing him on the property. Um, she eventually did, but I think it went awry. There's a lot of text communication in there between the two of them. Um, that kind of led to why at one point she wasn't letting them on the property um, to make the repairs. Well, that's a, that is a problem. I mean, well, what's the, what's the recommendation of the board? So, Mr. Chairman, within your county ordinance, you have items that you can find um, a contractor in violation of. I can read them off, just tick them off really quick to you. Um, we also have a printout, if you want to take a look at a printout. Um, we used to have a printout available. We have it right here. Um, I'm going to hand it to you. Let you look at those. Mm -hmm. Do you have this? You can pull it on the screen. I'm doing that right now, sir. Okay. Okay, on your screen you'll see the disciplinary proceedings for a contractor. I'm highlighting now, you know, the items that you can discipline a contractor for. You can also find a contractor in violation for any item in 489. They're also listed as well in Municode. At this time, it's staff's recommendation. Do you see anything? Mr. Chairman. I was about to say that as well, Mr. Irwin Waters. Um, it's staff's recommendation that the item that sh possibly could re be reviewed at a disciplinary proceeding is 15B, failure to obtain inspection. That's the only thing I could. But the intention is there, obviously. Uh, the paperwork is here. I mean, it's ready to go. It's just a matter of. Yeah, but reinstatement. It wouldn't be expired if I had gotten my final payment. And like I said, this is the only permit out there. 
that is expired. And just to, to clarify, Mr. Shams, the purpose of today's hearing is not to determine whether there is a violation, or whether there was or was not a violation of the code. It's just to determine um, if there was probable cause to support a violation. Okay. So the, the board today is just was determining is there probable cause that one was of these violations occurred? Late? And if so, he then it'll go to a hearing. It wasn't paid for. Okay. Uh, this comes back to one of the questions. It's uh, 15A. It was applied for, but not paid for. And Mr. Chairman, the, the board can, if the, if the board thinks that there's probable cause, we can proceed on that as well, and then we can make that full deter, or this board can make that full okay. determination so at the hearing. From what I'm looking at right now, uh, we've got item 15A and B as possible violations. So the, the board would need to make a motion. That's what I'm saying, but for the board, it's 15A and 15B. I'm not saying that it is, that's what we need to investigate. Right. But that's probable cause. Just as, entertain as, a motion. As, as a comment, please. Yeah. I don't see a blatant violation of contract or statute, in my opinion. And I mean, y'all, yeah, everybody's, um, that's just where I stand on. Well, my, my, from my position, it is we don't know yet until we bring the issue up at a disciplinary hearing. Because our, our attorney can't answer that question right now. I asked the attorney, um, wouldn't it take all five of us to vote in favor for that to move, to move forward? Well, you would need uh, a motion second. second. Well, that's my, my, my point is. Because we have a limited number of people here today. Well, you would need a, 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 the majority of what? who is here today. I got you. I entertain a motion to go to a disciplinary hearing with the items 15A and B as the, as the violation that being considered. These would both be his first violation, correct? Uh, is this your first violation? Yeah. Or we'll be considered your first, first violation. Complaint. We haven't, we haven't okay. determined that yet, but I'm just saying. Yes, sir. This would be Mr. Sham's first time coming before this board. Okay. But the point is, I'll entertain a motion to take it to disciplinary here subject to violations of 15A and B. Do I hear a motion? That's the only way we're going to resolve it. So it's been moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Aye. One negative. Four positive. The motion is approved. Taking it to a disciplinary hearing. Just, John, just to um, clarify A and B. Just 15 A and B are the two items. So, Mr. Shams, how this works out is in two months, we'll have a disciplinary hearing on this. Is this a joke? <laughs> like, really? Uh, um, man, this is ridiculous. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm sorry? It's a good one. You would say that. I would. <laughs> It's um, wrong. You'll, it's wrong. Rec you'll receive a notice, um, and it'll detail the administrative complaint and um, the possible violations and the possible um, fees or whatever associated if you were to be determined to be found in violation of those items, okay? Um, if you have any questions for us, you can always come over, you know, and, and find out more information on how this process works. No justice. <laughs> you have not been found guilty, sir. I'm I understand, just, we're, but we're the, just, this is this. All this does is move on. It's just next. more time that I have to spend on something that. I understand, but we've made unnecessary. we've made a decision as, as, as far as it's going right now. It but, yeah, you didn't have to though. It's well, we're point. bound we're bound by the law just as you are. So. Well, moving to item nine. Adjourned.
if we can't make a decision until